Good afternoon to one and all present here. As the last note is rung to signal the end of the MSMUN 2024, an overwhelming sense of excitement washes over us. This year's MSMUN was adroitly and independently led by the students of grades seven and eight themselves. And I hope that this memorable event has broadened the students' awareness and left them with a lasting sense of unity that will undoubtedly find a worthy place in their minds. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. The prayer will be led by Zachary Jacob of grade seven, who participated as a reporter of DISEC. Join your hands, close your eyes, and please bow your heads. Let us pray. O oh dear Good Shepherd, make our school a home away from our home. Make us always feel that we all belong to a family and that the teachers are like our parents. We believe that you speak through them when we listen to them. Give more wisdom to all concerned with us so that they may guide us always on the right path. Make us know your presence and power by rewarding and punishing us. Let us not become proud when we are rewarded and let us not become humiliated when you punish us for our mistakes. Give us enough strength to forget and forgive as you forgive us our sins. We thank you for the showers of blessings on this school for its growth and progress into a big and good school. Give us everything to make our lives in this school a happy one. This we ask for your love's sake. Amen. All are to be seated. The delegate of South Africa from UNEP, Yuvika Gupta, is invited to deliver the welcome address. Good afternoon to one and all present here. On an emotional level, MSMUN is a motivational experience. It is uplifting and lovely to be in the guise of a world leader finding solutions to the world's most important problems in the two days at hand. It activated and brought to life students' imagination and creativity. I'm sure that all the delegates would have had a great learning experience through and through the last two days especially, and to further build on this great learning experience. On this auspicious closing ceremony of the MSMUN 2024, I stand privileged to welcome our esteemed guests Dr. K. S. Sajni, Head of Department of English and the TOK Coordinator. The student body of the MS Middle School is greatly honored to have your presence amidst us. We warmly welcome you, ma'am. Kindly accept this bouquet on behalf of the Middle School Learning Community. My greetings of welcome are sounded specially to Dr. Madhav Dio Saraswat, Principal and Director of the school, our DOA, Mr. Dominic Jude Hurst, MYP Coordinator, Ms. Rita Chandran, and MSNHS Coordinator, Ms. Deepa Suresh. Last but not the least, I welcome all my dear teachers and my fellow delegates to the session of knowledge sharing and learning. Welcome once again to all. Thank you, Yuvika. The heads of the committees in MUN are praised for their exceptional efforts in shaping the conference experience. They are the guiding lights, pillars of knowledge, and catalysts for meaningful dialogue. Their tireless preparation, organization, and active engagement with the delegates have enhanced the quality of their debates and inspired them to reach greater heights. Their effective leadership navigates the complexities of their committees, managing differing opinions and fostering an atmosphere of respect and collaboration. 
Beyond the committee sessions, the, head, the heads provide support and guidance to the delegates, providing crucial insights and mentoring them in their pursuit of an optimal resolution. Their dedication to continuous improvement and innovation ensured an exceptional conference that has left a lasting impact. The head of the United Nations Environment Program, Ved Zawar, is invited onto the stage to present his report. Good afternoon, respected chairs, esteemed delegates, and other dignitaries. Robert Swan, the first person in history to walk to both the North and the South Pole, said, the greatest threat to our planet Earth is the belief that someone else will save it. The United Nations Environmental Program was formed to monitor the state of the environment and coordinate responses to the world's greatest environmental challenges. I, therefore, am honored to announce UNEP as the newest addition to this year's Middle School Model United Nations and feel extremely privileged to be the ch this chair for the committee. For this year's Middle School Model United Nations, the United Nations Environmental Program focused on the question of addressing the pollution of air and water, discussing monitoring and control measures, and promoting international cooperation to improve environmental quality. This is a pressing issue and that plagues our world harshly and unforgivingly. But the UNEP is there to mitigate and slowly get rid of the pollution of air and water. I, being a massive environmentalist myself, was so euphoric being part of such a large congress where everyone was so vigorously debating on air and water pollution. My committee, I'm sure, is now well versed about the issues of, uh, of air and water pollution and the role of, role of cooperation between nations in order to mitigate this great issue and how to enforce viable solutions to the problems. As said by my co-chair during the opening ceremony, harmony between nations is the best way to solve the issue. This year, UNEP had some spirited arguments, constructive debates, and some very long amendments, which I be believe really did un unite the nations in UNEP. This was my first time chairing a committee. I was very anxious, but with the opportune help of the co-chair, Dhiren Ganapati, and the rapporteur, Ganeev Singh Saluja, the committee proved to be successful with three resolutions passed. Now, to release the tension that had been building up from the very beginning of the middle school model United Nations, the honorable mention amongst the delegates goes to the, del goes, go to the delegates of Denmark and the delegates of South Korea, and the honorable mention amongst the co-delegates goes to the co-delegate of USA. I take this opportunity to thank all the teachers in, in charge of our committee, Gwen Miss, Prabhu Kumar Sir, Girjam Miss, Sandeep Sir, and Jagdish Sir. Signing off, Wade Zawar, the chair of the committee, UNEP. Thank you, Wade. Now, the head of DISEC, Dhruva Umachagi, is called onto the stage to share his experience in this MUN. Good afternoon, honorable delegates, chairs, and esteemed teachers. I, Dhruva Umachagi, led this year's MSMUN head for DISEC, Disarmament and International Security Committee, the first committee and the first General Assembly of the United Nations, which came into existence in 1945. Stop feeding, ter stop feeding terrorism with blood of our youth, said Hussein bin Abdullah, the Crown Prince of Jordan, as we convene to address one of the most pressing, press, pressing issues of our time, the promotion of education and awareness on the pivotal role of youth building a, a culture of peace and disarmament to counter the scourge of youth recruitment and terrorism. Having this agenda, having this as the agenda for this year, we stood at a critical juncture. Moreover, this time, our delegates involved themselves into heated and lively de debates and raise, raised many amendments and most, importantly, most importantly, raised 156 points of information, an unforeseen event. A big round of applause for you, delegates. Furthermore, the delegates came up with many innovative solutions and operative clauses. Although this year the procedures were changed and resolutions and position papers were introduced, the delegates gained their knowledge and understood the new rules of conference very well. Additionally, four blocks presented the resolution and 
two failed and one passed. This year's MUN was a big blast, and it was vicious and energetic. However, the chair had to warn the delegates of UK, USA, and Myanmar to control their hilarious laughs during critical situations. Moreover, the delegate of USA threatened other member states uh, with a nuclear attack if they did not agree with his point. These were the funny anecdote, uh, anecdotes of our committee. Now, for the tension that has been building up in the committee for the past week, the honorable mentions, which are backed by the delegate of India, the delegate of South Korea, and the de co-delegate of Iraq. Well done, delegates. Do not let your moral down if your resolution fails. This is exactly what happens in the United Nations. Resolution fails and passes, but also unveils the proficiency of each delegate, how uh, each delegate to debate and present their ideas, and how well a delegate shows his or her diplomacy. Last but not the least, I would like to thank my co-head, Natika, Rapita Zak, and the student in charges, Kashvi, Serene, Damien, and Vian for their unwavering support and gu gu guidance throughout the committee sessions. Additionally, I would also like to thank Ramni Miss, Ashok Sir, Lester Sir, Sriman Sir, and Sonali Miss for assisting everyone in the committee and helping us at all times. Signing off, the head of DISEC for the MSME on 2024, Dhruva Majgi. Thank you. Thank you, Dhruva. Now we will have a musical interlude performed by Karthik Gupta of Grade 7, who participated as co-delegate of Thailand under the committee World Health Organization. He will be playing the Washington Post on the keyboard. Please welcome him to the stage. Thank you, Karthik, for that amazing performance. Now, we return to the presentation of the head's reports. The head of WHO, Adiv Reji, is requested to present his report. Good afternoon, esteemed heads, co-heads, raptors, and delegates. It is with great honor that I, Adiv Raji, head of World Health Organization, stand before you in the closing ceremony of this MSME in 2024. This year, our efforts have centered on an issue of paramount importance, addressing the importance of water, sanitation, and hygiene in healthcare facilities to prevent the spread of infections and improve overall healthcare outcomes. As we reflect upon the proceedings of the past few days, it is evident that all the delegates have been working extremely hard to prove their skills during the committee sessions. In particular, I would like to commend the delegate of Japan and Spain for their exceptional contributions. Their diplomacy and unwavering determination served as an inspiration to all who participated in our committee. Please give them a round of applause. I 
I would also like to say that all of the five resolutions in our committee passed. On behalf of the World Health Organization, I extend a heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed teachers who have guided us throughout this conference. Justin sir, Arsina miss, Jokin sir, Neetu miss, Shilalita miss, Praveen sir, and Tanupriya miss. Your expertise and unwavering support have been invaluable to our success. Finally, I would like to express my profound appreciation to my student leader, Vian, Th Vian Thiago, for his phenomenal leadership skills. My co-head here of Kangard, who was always by my side, and my rapid of Fiona Patel, who never stopped asking me questions. Without their tireless efforts, this committee would not have been possible. As we bid farewell to the MSMU in 2024, let us carry with us the lessons we have learned. In the true words of Dr. Juan Pablo, I quote, there can be no doubt, partnership and collaboration are a critical way to support country leadership in addressing the overlapping challenges and crises that are preventing millions of people to survive and thrive. I end quote. Thank you. Thank you, Adil. Next, the head of UNHRC, Aradhana Murali Krishnan, will be coming to the stage to confabulate her account as head. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, esteemed guests, and fellow participants. Today, we gathered to commemorate the closing of this year's Model United Nations. As we reflect on the past few days, we can confidently say that we have witnessed the empowerment of diplomacy, critical thinking, and the power of youth. Throughout this conference, our delegates have shown immense dedication, passion, and the commitment to the principles of United Nations. As delegates, you have demonstrated the ability to put aside personal interest and represent the diverse perspective of your assigned countries. It is in this spirit that we have engaged in productive discussions, negotiated resolutions, and sought common ground to address the world's most pressing issues. Together, we have tackled complex challenges ranging from climate change, poverty elimination, human rights violations, to conflict resolutions. In these discussions, we have witnessed the power of dialogue and the potential for change when minds come together. The diversity of idea and the exchange of opinion have broadened our horizons and fostered a deeper understanding of global affairs. Beyond the many formalities, more informal incidents occurred, including the delegate of North Korea, without justification attempting to bar the delegate of France. However, the honorable delegate of North Korea ended up getting himself barred. However, all, the, all these people have worked tirelessly to make this MUN truly unique. Therefore, I would like to express my gratitude for the contribution to this conference, specifically to the delegate of North Korea, Vihan Chopra, and the delegate of Iraq, Arush Agarwal. Please put your hands together for these delegates who have made our committee a lively one. Beyond the walls of this auditorium, we are acutely aware of the challenges our world faces. Complex problems continue to persist, challenging and threatening our shared future. However, I stand here today filled with hope. For I have witnessed the potential for change within each and every one of you. Together, we have proven that the spirit of United Nations lies within us and that we are the agents for progress and harmony. As we conclude this model United Nations, let us carry the lessons we have learned and the friendships we have formed. Let us be the catalysts for change, the champions for justice, and the advocates for peace. Let us channel the skills we have honed within these walls to make a tangible difference in our committee and beyond. Before I conclude, I would like to thank our supervising teachers, Lina Miss, Marceline Miss, Sangamitra Miss, Akula Sir, and Kiti Miss. And I would never forget my co-chair, Nanjapa, and my rapporteur continuously disturbing me and, put, and giving their extreme support to make this MUN a successful one. Thank you. Head of UN Achasi, Aradhana Murali Krishnan. Thank you, Aradhana, for that beguiling speech. 
in a remote village nestled within barren landscapes. The villagers find solace in the rhythm of their traditional dances, even during the harsh re realities of water scarcity. To celebrate the beauty of water and reaffirm our commitment to a sustainable future for all. Without further ado, put your hands together for the students of grade 6 that are called to the stage for the dance performance choreographed by Ms. Akshita. Thank you for that wonderful performance. This could not have been possible without the efforts of Ms. Akshita. Can we please have a round of applause for these passionate dancers as well as Mrs. Akshita? Any learning experience becomes more meaningful once we reflect on our academic attainment. It is now time to hear some reflections. To start, to start, I kindly welcome the co-delegate of Pakistan from UNHRC, Akshaj of grade seven. Greetings to all. I'm the co-delegate of Pakistan from UNHRC to deliver my reflection on MSMUN. 
I would like to first state that I've thoroughly enjoyed my experience at MSMUN. Whether it was the mock, mock debate topics or the motions for entertainment at the end of meetings in which we held catwalks and additional activities, I don't know. But as a relatively new student at GSIS and someone completely new to debate, after hearing about MSM, uh, MSMUN and learning what it was, I was immediately interested and even more so excited. It was a wonderful opportunity to display and hone my skills in formal debate. I genuinely feel that I've learned a lot in the short few days of MSMUN. Before MSMUN, I'd always believed that debate is all about collapsing your opponent's point. I've since realized that the objective of debate is to speak for what you believe and argue for a cause. It is to progress towards change and improvement. That is what debate teaches us. It teaches us that we, the new generation, as, as we, the new generation, emerge and develop, we should aim to do just that, progress towards change and develop, change and improvement, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Akshaj. Next, we have the strong-willed delegate of Japan from WHO, Diparnita Paul, to offer her reflections. Good afternoon, my fellow delegates, co-delegates, and all present here. I'm the Panatapa, delegate of Japan from WHO. I'm truly honored to reflect on my uh, learning as we approach the, approach the, uh, I'm truly honored to, con to reflect on my learning as we approach the uh, confection of uh, MSMN. Throughout this journey, the interaction with fellow delegates have been valuable, serving as an inspiration for the enhancement of my, so of my social speaking and teamwork skills. During the discussions, there were occasions of lively debates and arguments, particularly with the Rapporteur. This is because we struggle with di uh, differing perspective on resolution and amendments. One of the key moments in my learning during this MSMN was the unwavering support and guidance provided by our teachers, who assisted me in refining my arguments and point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Dipanita, for that informative account. Tashin Biswas, delegate of South Korea from DISEC, is called to the stage to share her thoughts with us. Good afternoon to one and all present here. I'm Tashin Biswas, the delegate of South Korea from DISEC. The takeaways from this seminar are a lot and truly cherished by me, as it not only helped me to, to develop myself, but it also helped many students in developing their skills, which will contribute in creating a successful future. Furthermore, this seminar led to self-development and promoted serious consequences happening all around the world which encouraged us to explore more. The skills learned from this seminar, like research skills, communication skills, critical thinking skills, and so on, are life lessons learned, which gets us ready to face challenges. Signing off, Delegate of South Korea from DISEC. Thank you. Thank you, Tashin. Finally, we have the Delegate of Denmark from UNEP, Sarna Gochait, to present a nostalgic recollection. Good afternoon to everyone present here. I, Sarna Guchait, the delegate of Denmark from UNEP, am honored to share my reflections on the events that occurred over the past few days. I'm sure everyone's experience in this year's MUN was both enriching and enlightening for everyone involved. Participating in this MUN has broadened my understanding of global affairs and significantly bolstered my critical thinking skills to discover several solutions for the agenda. Of my many encounters as a delegate, the intense debate within a committee regarding an amendment which persisted almost two hours. Despite of heated debates and occasional chaos, I'm pleased to report that my resolution ultimately passed. 
I express my heartfelt appreciation to everyone involved in making this MUN experience memorable and impactful. Signing off, the Delegate of Denmark, Sarna Gushait. Thank you, Sarna, for that narrative. Please welcome the chief guest, Dr. K. S. Sajni, head of the English department, to the stage to address the audience. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry, my throat is in a bad condition. So good afternoon, principal, sir, principal and director, sir, coordinators, directors of act, director of activity, teachers, and my dear students, <laughs> I don't know how many of you know me, but uh, I don't even know whether I'm suited to be your chief guest, but uh, people have considered me to be suited to this honor that I've been given, and I'm really, really grateful to whoever suggested my name as a chief guest for this occasion, because right from the time this auditorium was built, my wish was to use the stage for some purpose or the other. And this is an occasion I definitely will cherish and I really value this occasion. Now, to move on to the uh, MSMUN, I figured out from your speeches and from the sounds that I heard in the room that I stay in M2, a lot of uh, activities going on in the different venues of the MUN. And I realized that you have been learning a lot, going through life a lot, and developing a lot of skills. Now, the most important skill that you gain through an MUN is definitely finding solutions to problems. But in the process of doing so, I think definitely you would have developed a skill that remained unspoken so far, a, per, a skill that you would never even think that is associated with MUN at your level. But you have done it without knowing it. And what is that skill? Any guesses, anybody? You went into different committees as delegates of other countries, very few people who are delegates of India. Yes or no? So what skill was it that made you take up the role of a, a, a person of another country? Yes, I can see your hand rise. Come on, answer. Which skill do you think you developed? You were raising your hand, weren't you? Yes. Debating skills is definitely that. But when you took on the role of a person of another country, you were also developing the skill of empathy. You all know what empathy is, putting yourself in the place of somebody else and thinking for that somebody else, and thus solving problems by debating. Now, I have a proverb that is very similar to the skill of Empathy, and that is, any guesses, anybody? May seem to be opposite your theme, your central theme. What was your central theme? Fight for the world, fight for your world, and not for your country. So this proverb may seem to be opposite that. Any guesses? Okay, you people don't want to commit yourself, I suppose. Anyway, this proverb is charity begins at home. Does anybody know the meaning of charity begins at home? Nobody wants to answer again. Are you all fast asleep? Yes or no? Anybody? Yes? Come on. Exactly. <clears throat> yes, you are right. Thank you for that. If you are wanting to do something, start with yourself. Start with the people around you. Now, in relation to this, I have a story which I read this morning. It is associated with, this particular story is associated with a time that we are celebrating during these days. I don't know how many of you are aware of it. The month of Ramadan is on, 
How many of you are aware of that? Yes. And what do people do during the month of Ramadan? They fast. They fast before sunrise. Uh, sorry, they eat before sunrise. They fast the whole day. Fasting doesn't mean not taking any food. It also means not drinking any water. And they eat after sunset. And this fast is maintained, children, for the sake of the entire world. If people maintain the fast of Ramadan, they do it for the entire world. Now, the story that I'm narrating to you is about a girl who was fasting, as her religious uh, group would advise her to. And she woke up after the eating happened. She slept. And then she woke up. She found it very irritating that the lights were on and the door was open. There was a cold wind blowing across her bed. And she got very irritated, thinking that her domestic help had done nothing to help her out. It is a time of fast. She felt that everybody should contribute to her you know, well-being, so that she could fast well. So in her mind, she started muttering against the domestic help, whom she called Jamila auntie. So she got up. She started cursing that Jamila auntie. Why didn't she switch off the lights? Why didn't she close the door? And then she went, got up herself and went to close the door. While she was closing the door, she heard sounds coming from the kitchen. And then she realized, oh my God, this is my mother cooking. Fasting has started. But my mother is cooking for Jamila auntie who does not fast. She got angrier at the thought of this. And then she rushed to the kitchen and she told her mother. Her mother was actually cooking for Jamila auntie. And she said, why are you cooking for Jamila auntie? Jamila auntie is not fasting, so definitely her well-being is in a better state than yours is. You must be taking rest. Why would you do this? Now, her mother was very disappointed on hearing this. Why do you think she was disappointed? Any idea? This girl, yes, tell me. Exactly. So the very spirit of Ramadan fasting was not maintained by this girl. It's all about charity. And she was not being charitable to this lady who was helping the entire family day in and day out, she was being charitable to this place where she works in. And the mother said, are you aware of the fact that Jamila auntie has to fend for herself, her entire family? And day in and day out, she is working for us. So don't we have to do something for her? It's just the cooking of a little bit of food. Why wouldn't we do that? So that's my message for you today. Signing off for the closing ceremony of the MSMUN. That if you see somebody, we have this habit. I've seen that a lot happening here. We have this habit of making a mockery of some people, a few laughs at each other's expense. Let's control that and be charitable towards the others and understand them from their own perspectives. Understand them for what they are, who they are. Accept them as they are. That is what MUN is all about. We do a model United Nations but it is for the purpose of bringing the entire world together. So if we start off from home, if we start off from school, we will be able to do it for the rest of the world. That reminds me today, of course, being the World Water Day, charity again begins at home. Wherever you go, your school, back at home, try saving some water so that the rest of the world and the generations after you will not suffer from water shortage. Thank you, everyone, for the speech. I now declare.
the middle school model United Nations for the year 2024 closed. Thank you, ma'am, for those words of encouragement. Praveen Sir is called to the stage to announce the awards for MSMUN 2024. Good afternoon, all. This is the first time uh, we are announcing awards for MSMUN. The only reason is that the heads in their first meeting of MSMUN, they announced to the entire MSMUN community that they will be, there will be awards for best delegate, best core delegate, and best position keeper. And uh, this heads had a marking scheme and a criteria to evaluate each and every position paper. Uh, I sat with them after dinner because they were evaluating the position paper, they marked the position paper, and they have a criteria for the best delegate. So without much ado, I'll announce it committee-wise. First is for UNEP. The best position paper goes to the delegate and co-delegate of South Africa, Yuvika Gupta and Darsh Agarwal. The best co-delegate in UNEP is co-delegate of Chad, Aryan Patel. <laughs> best delegate, delegate of Singapore, Advika Jindal. <laughs> now we have UNHRC. Best position paper was submitted by two delegates. Rumesha Alam Khan, the delegate of Ukraine, and Kanishk, delegate of Russia. <laughs> Best core delegate goes to delegate of Pakistan, Anubhav. <laughs> and best delegate is shared by two delegates, Rajit Gupta, delegate of Singapore, and Delegate of China, Riddhi Somredi. <laughs> okay, sorry. Now moving to DICEC. Best position paper is submitted by the Delegate and Co-Delegate of UK, Abhuk Nagpal and Amy Amrish Patel. Best core delegate, delegate of Ukraine, Diya Shah. And best delegate in DICEC is delegate of China, Samanyu Mishra. <laughs> Moving on to WHO, the best position paper was submitted by delegate of India, Dhruv Patel. And best co-delegate is delegate of Germany, Ridan Agarwal. <laughs> and the best delegate is delegate of UK, Virat Vijay. <laughs> Congratulations, delegates, and thank you. Kivan of grade seven is invited to the stage for an expression of gratitude. Good afternoon to one and all present here. It is a privilege and great joy for me to extend the vote of thanks to all those who have contributed in one way or the other to make this MUN a special one. We have finally come to the end of one of the most awaited programs of the middle school. MSMUN 2024 will be incomplete if I do not thank each and every one behind this fabulous gathering of brilliant thinking minds of action who made this MUN very endearing for all of us. Time, 
hard work and dedication have gone into its making history. It taught us an umpteen number of values and gave us an idea about how to be responsible global citizens. We are immensely privileged to hear and listen to the chief guest of the day, Dr. K.S. Sajani, head of the Department of English and TOK coordinator. Thank you, ma'am, for spending time with us and for the inspiring speech. My heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Madhav Dev Saraswat, principal and director of our school, our DOA, Mr. Dominic Jude Hurst, and MYP coordinator, Ms. Rita Chandran, along with MS and HS coordinator, Ms. Deepa Suresh, for the timely help and support. The teachers of the middle school thank you so much for always being with us and guiding us throughout our preparation. Our immense gratitude goes to Akshita Miss for that mind-blowing dance performance. I take this opportunity to thank the IT team of MSMUN, Agam and Kushal for their video presentation. Special thanks goes to Mr. Sam, Mr. Prabhu, and Mr. Ajay. Last but not the least, our, heart, our heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Jackson and Mr. Sussi and their team for the beautiful arrangements in all of the MSMUN venues. Thank you so much, MCs for the day, Ridi and Arav. I would like to thank Sidhu sir and his team for the superb music performance on the opening and closing ceremonies. But how can I leave the stage without thanking Praveen sir for making this MSMUN a memorable one? Delegates, Thank you so much for being a wonderful audience. Until we meet next year, signing off, Co-Delegate of India, Kivan Chodani. <laughs>